Checksums are a specific error coding technique that is relatively cheap to compute and provides reasonable coverage for some situations, but is limited to low Hamming distances. We'll go through the usual suspects for checksum computations and explain the differences and their capabilities. As a baseline, consider this chart of probability of undetected errors with code word length. The 1 over 2 to the k line is a theoretical anchor point against which we can compare other error detection codes. That anchor point is chosen because if you have a completely random code word and a k-bit error code, there's a 1 in 2 to the k chance that, by random chance, the error code will correspond to the data word and you'll get an undetected error. In other words, somebody's replaced all your data with completely random garbage, but with probability 1 in 2 to the k, you won't know it and you'll think it's good data even though it's bad data. The question is, can we do better at a moderate computation cost? Let's start with the simple checksums, which are additions across all the data word bits. The simplest computation is to XOR all the data words together. This chart is for 16-bit data words, so the idea is you break your data into 16-bit chunks, you XOR the 16-bit chunks together, and at the end you get a 16-bit error code, which is a bitwise position XOR of all the bits in that position and all the other words of the data word. That gives you much worse than random hash performance, but it does give you Hamming distance too. This may be a little counterintuitive. On average, your probability of undetected error is worse with an XOR than a random hash. However, it will guarantee that no single bit error is undetected, which is something a random hash cannot actually do. If your needs are extremely modest and you have essentially no computation power because you're building a hardware circuit, XOR might be OK, but it is a very weak capability. If you have a little more computation power, and especially if you're running in software, where addition and XOR cost the same typically, you can use a 2's complement addition. And that gives you HD2, with, but with a little bit better, where lower is better, undetected error probability. The reason for this is your performance will increase the more you mix the bits together of the data word to make it harder for a single bit flip to go unnoticed. 2's complement addition checksum detects all 1-bit errors and most, but not all, 2-bit errors. You can use a 1's complement addition, which wraps the carry bit around, and it does a little bit better, but on this graph you can barely tell the difference. If you're going to use plain addition for a checksum, you should use a 1's complement addition checksum if you can. It is the best of this family, but as you can see from this chart, you can do much, much better. There are a couple complex checksums, a Fletcher checksum and an Adler checksum, that are more complicated but still rely on addition as their primary function. A Fletcher checksum keeps not one running addition across the data word, but two running additions. For a 16-bit Fletcher checksum, it would keep one 8-bit counter, which simply adds all the bytes as it sees them. It would take a second 8-bit counter that adds up the values in the first 8-bit counter. It turns out that the interaction between these two additions gives you better performance at short word lengths. And in fact, will get you Hamming distance of 3 up to a certain breakpoint just under 2k bits for a 16-bit value. Longer Fletcher checksums, for example, a 32-bit Fletcher checksum, has a similar property that it gives you Hamming distance 3 at small values and then changes to Hamming distance 2. But even at Hamming distance 2, it does dramatically better than a simple addition because you get a more complex mixing, and therefore it's much more difficult to find a 2-bit error that just happens to get past all those complicated addition functions to result in an undetected error. An Adler checksum is the same idea as a Fletcher checksum, except when the counters roll over in a Fletcher checksum at the values of 255 in a 16-bit Fletcher checksum, the Adler checksum wraps the counters around at a relatively prime modulus, which gives you somewhat better mixing, but at the cost of having a couple values that are never really used. While this seems appealing, the loss of the extra values impairs the error detection ability, and it ends up being that the Adler checksum does not actually uh, give you substantially better performance, and in some cases it's a little bit worse. And especially considering the additional complexity of the calculation, it's almost never worth using an Adler checksum. 
If you want to use this type of checksum, you should be using a Fletcher checksum. CRCs do even better than checksums. As you can see from this curve, CRCs are dramatically lower than the Fletcher-Adler checksum. This is because CRCs are based on a convolution-style algorithm, which does very thorough bit mixing. Other checksums, including Fletcher and Adler, are based on an addition operation, which only mixes adjacent bits, and therefore is not as thorough at mixing bits. Even better, you can see for small data word lengths, CRCs provide higher Hamming distances than three.